Perfect. Who better than Derek, Pat, Andrew, the wrestling crew? Man, they bout to put an end to y'all careers like a finishing move. They bout to give y'all facts on these cats that's fighting on these mats. Y'all can't see them like John Cena. Even if y'all had 2020 vision, y'all better listen. Pay attention and take notes down and realize that it's not your time now. And watch these three kings take the crown. Hey, hey. This is the big deal, Craig Steele. And Micah Jenkins. Gino Guts. We are the Taboo Crew, and you're listening to Wrestling IQ 101. Who's bad? Hey everyone, welcome back to another edition of Wrestling IQ 101. Make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. I'm Andrew, alongside Derek. What's up, guys? And we're sitting here with Mr. Davis, the turned-up superstar. What's going on, man? Uh, not much, man. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be on here. Oh, man, we're happy to have you on. So, I, had a, I wanted to talk about, how'd you come up with the nickname, the turned-up superstar? Um, it's actually kind of a funny story. Um, so, I was sitting back in the locker room at OTW. And, you know, me and uh, another guy by the name of Andy Bivens, we were having a conversation. And at this point, I had just started, you know, wrestling. I just kind of started to get uh, my thing going. But I didn't really have a character. I didn't really, there wasn't much to me. I was just the kid in the singlet who would come out and wrestle. And as a joke, we were sitting back talking. And I was like, you know what? It'd be funny if I just randomly screamed turned up before I went to the ring. I wonder if anybody would do anything. So I walk out, I scream, turn up as I come through the curtain, and everybody in the audience got behind me all of a sudden. And it just became this thing where I would just say it whenever I go out. And Brian, who you had on before, Brian Johnson, he uh, he looked at me and he was like, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I, okay. White people. And kind of <laughs> broke it down for him and explained it. And he was like, keep doing that. It, it looks like it's working. Just keep going with that. And I was like, okay. And then it just became, you know, the thing that I do. I go out, I scream, turned up, and I get the crowd excited. Nice. Now, I was, I was going to ask, uh, that was actually going to be one of my questions because we had Brian Johnson on. I was going to ask, uh, I know you competed against him. And if there was any, like, good advice he has given you or, like, can you just kind of talk like you guys relationship um yeah as far as advice like pretty much my entire development as a professional wrestler has all been advice given to me by brian he was um the first person to you know sort of break me in as far as wrestling is concerned like he was there the first day i ever set foot in a wrestling ring he's been there ever since um He's giving me advice as far as like being a professional in the locker room, just how to carry myself when I go to outside promotions, how to carry myself when dealing with other wrestlers, you know, in the industry or just even setting the example for the younger guys who are now getting into the locker room and want to be, you know, at, you know, or in the main event scene. So, um, yeah, he's given me tons of advice that I, you can't put a price on that. Plus, he's just a great guy overall. Yeah. Can you can you kind of tell us um, how you got started as well? Like, like how long have you been wrestling and how you got started? Um, it's been about, I want to say, going on three, four years now. Mm-hmm. And basically the way I got started was I was at a point where I wanted to see if I could do this. Just could, could I step in the ring and do like all the guys that, you know, I watch on TV or, you know, you see at these random local indie events. And I just wanted to know, could that be me? So I looked around for schools near me at the time. Um, at the time, I was going to Rowan University down in Glassboro. And I found out there was a school about maybe 15, 20 minutes away called Old Time Wrestling. So I show up one Saturday afternoon to check out one of their shows. Of course, being the genius that I am, I showed up and forgot my wallet. (laughs) So the show had already started, and the girl at the door was like, oh, that's going to be 10 bucks." And I was like, ah, hold on. And then I had to run back, go grab my wallet, and come back to the show. So by the time (laughs) I got back, I missed 
pretty much most of the show, but I got to see the main event. And the main event was two guys, one guy by the name of Craig Nash, who's like a solid seven footer, I think. And then, uh, another guy by the name of Chris Bourne. And they tore it up. And I just remember after watching their match, I was like, this is definitely where I want to be if I want to start my career. When you were going to indie shows, what shows were you going to back then? Not a lot of indie shows. Like, I had a few, they did a few, um, like, they had outside promotions come into Rowan. Actually, they started this thing where they would bring in, like, a random wrestling company, and they would put on shows for us at Rowan. I, I feel bad because I can't remember the name of the promotion. I just remember they did, like, a pretty nice show for for like the students at the school and then i remember eugene <laughs> nick dinsmore was the main event and he was like the big draw for the night which is cool because i got to meet eugene and take a photo with him <laughs> that's cool, nice. yeah, that's cool. So, did you, you grew up watching wrestling yeah i got introduced to wrestling uh through my stepbrother he was a big fan at the time during the attitude era and i was like a kid during that time so i wasn't really like mom would never allow me to watch something like that yeah. and uh he came over to visit one weekend and he was like hey i want to watch monday night raw so he like found it and put it on and i think the first thing i saw was the segment where the rocks in the ring cutting a promo about being intercontinental champion but he doesn't have his belt and then steve austin comes up on the titan tron and he tosses the belt into a river yeah it's a classic <laughs> yeah, that was like my first introduction to pro wrestling after seeing that. And after after that, I really wasn't into it. Like I said, my mom didn't let me watch that type of stuff mm -hmm. growing up. But the first ever live event I got to experience as far as like a WWE um, event, they did a live show in Trenton. And my cousin was a big fan of Chris Jericho. Mm -hmm. And it was his birthday weekend, so he told his dad, I want to go see the show. Can you take us? So my uncle took me and four of my cousins and we sat there and the main event of the show was Chris Jericho versus Chris Benoit. And I remember being in awe of that match because it was so good and so entertaining. And I didn't even understand wrestling, but I understood that. Nice. So during that time as well, did you, did you have like any favorites of your own? I didn't really, because like I said, prior to that, I wasn't really watching wrestling. Like I saw the, sh I saw that house show, and then Chris Jericho kind of became my favorite wrestler from that point on for a while. And then when I got into the show, I started to like, you know, I got into like the Hardy Boys were like, uh, I was big fans of them. Um, who else was that? Like I really, I really dug Stone Cold and The Rock. The Rock was like probably one of my biggest favorites because. Just he made fun of everyone. <laughs> and he was like the personification of cool in my eyes. <laughs> definitely, definitely. It's funny you bring up the Hardy Boys. You actually competed in a TLC match. Yes, actually. How, um, how grueling a match is that? Was it was it fun for you or something? You know. I mean, it was fun and painful at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> So it was a lot of fun taking part in that match and just being in there, me and my tag team partner, Calvin, you know, getting to compete against uh, guys like Brian Johnson and Adam Chandler, who I had had, you know, singles matches with before and we had had regular tag team style matches with before. But like to up the ante and be a part of that and then to also main event a big show was just it was amazing. And it hurt like hell the next day. You, you guys, uh, I saw a clip. You guys sneaked attack the super, uh, the, the best, you know, the super friends. You know, yeah. Well, how'd that come about? Why, why did you do the sneak attack? <laughs> well, I mean, granted, you know, going toe to toe with the guy the size of Adam Chandler doesn't always seem like a good idea. Like it's noble, it's very noble to step in there, man to man, one face up. But that that guy's huge. Yeah. <laughs> So sometimes you gotta like uh, let's play to our strengths. We're a little quicker, a little more deceptive. Let's let's go that route. <laughs> and also, you and Calvin are, are tag champions, right? Um, at this stage, we yeah. are not tag champions. The yeah. Super Friends are currently tag champions at this point. Yeah. Um, 
but we've got a match coming up March 11th. We're going to step back in the ring. It's going to be a fatal four-way tag match for the titles. So more than likely, we're going <laughs> to... That's a little cocky, but uh, <laughs> we're probably going to go in there. We're probably going to kick some butt and yeah. more than likely come away with those championships. What I was going to say is how... How does that make you feel when you when you win the tag team championship with him? Does does it make you feel like you're accomplishing something that people are recognizing your work and stuff like that? Um, every championship victory I have I've had feels special to me, and you know people might knock it like, oh well, it's only OTW. Well, you know what? OTW is my first home in wrestling, so any time I win a championship there, it feels special. And the first time I ever won the classic championship was a very big moment for me. It was the first title I ever held, period. The first time I won the tag team championships was a big deal to me. And then the times that I've won, like the time that I won with Calvin was extremely special to me because originally this, me and him wasn't even an idea and it got tossed around. And then when we came together as a team, I didn't even expect us to work as well as we have together. And it's honestly been like the most fun I've had in wrestling, just teaming with him, being a part of high society. I, I, I don't know how much better it can get. <laughs> yeah. And this is another dynamic from uh, Captain Calvin Christopher. You also have Jasmine in there. How's yes, it working yeah. with her? Cause she's also, uh, she can be found with Brian Johnson too. And Justin Pusner. <laughs> yes, yeah, she is. Uh, Miss Jasmine is a very key part of our group. She's actually um, she's our manager, but she's also a worker in her own right. She's come a, a really long way in the period of time that she's been at OTW. Yeah. Um, she's a tough chick. <laughs> I've seen her get a butt kicked a lot and still come back like ready to learn, ready to work. Um, she does work as a manager for one mean team in a lot of places they go. She's, you know, the manager for BTY and a lot of places where they go. She, she can do it all pretty much. So like talking, working in the ring, she's definitely come a long way. So like with us exclusively at OTW, like I said, she, she just adds that piece to the group. I feel like in a lot of situations, like whether it's with one mean team or if it's with us having her in, the mix changes up the appearance of the group and to me makes it a lot better. Now, uh, I wanted to kind of go back to when we were talking about the uh, TLC match because you uh, you also participated in uh, a last man standing match as well. Uh, I just wanted to know, when you get those opportunities, do you enjoy those type of matches? Like, you know, the special gimmick matches? I enjoy them because they... Because any type of special stipulation match that you throw out to the fans definitely gets them a little bit more interested, especially because the last man standing match came as the culmination of a very long feud I've been having with Andy Bivians for the classic championship. I believe we were in a best of five series and it was a two to two. This was the last match. Whoever walked away was champion. And yeah, we, we beat the crap out of each other and the crowd loved it. I, I, walked away with the victory, held that championship high above my head, and just the feeling of that excitement and that rush was just undescribable. And then, of course, like the TLC match, like I said, high stakes, high stipulation with probably two of the best guys I've been in the ring with as far as competition-wise and just pure excitement every time we do anything like that. Uh, and I also wanted to ask, um, you know, having the classic championship as well as having the tag team champions, um, do you think there's like a, a significance or an importance when it comes to having title belts? Being that you're, you know, you're relatively new into wrestling. I know we talk to like a lot of guys who are like veterans and they kind of feel like, you know, oh, titles don't really mean anything. I just want to kind of get like, you know, a perspective from someone who's relatively new into wrestling. To me, um, those who say that titles don't mean anything, I I feel like you don't appreciate 
the title itself. Like, I, I know a lot of guys will say, well, it's a title coming from this promotion or it's a title, like, this is just an indie. It's not that big. It really doesn't matter until you're, like, on, a, like, a main stage. My reply to that is, like, well, it might not seem big to you because you want to go to the big stage, which is fine. Every competitor who steps in the ring should feel that way. But to me, I like to live in the moment. Like, I don't know if making it to, you know, a big name promotion is in the cards for me. So I enjoy every time I get to compete in a ring for whoever it might be, whether it's like two people in a warehouse with no heat or no, you know, AC in the summertime and I'm competing for a championship that's, you know, or um, competing in front of a crowd of like, I don't know, like 200, you know, like to me, every moment in the wrestling ring is something special and it's valued to me personally. Definitely. Now, if a veteran says mm, that's just how they feel personally, but me, I care about every championship, every match, every fan who paid to see me. Nice. And I think, uh, kind of like, kind of like the way you put it, uh, you know, like you saying you're at OTW, like that's your home and, you know, you value every championship. I think that you you can kind of see that in wrestlers and the passion and the hard work they put in. And I think that that's like a good perspective to have, you know, when you're in the independence like that. Yeah, man, you got to you got to appreciate what you have and where you're at, because like not everybody's going to make it to the top. So there's like what how many guys is, you know, like. WWE, for example, how many guys do they turn away on a regular basis? So, you know, like there's what? There's a lot of indie names that we could probably name off the top of our heads who were sitting back like, yeah, man, why won't they sign that guy? Or why won't they give this team a chance? Or why won't they call up that girl? Yeah. Like, this is a lot of them. And it's just like, and those are just like <clears throat> the good big names that we know. There's so many more wrestlers out there like myself or, you know, even less to just don't get that chance or might never make it. So you got to appreciate it while you got it. Like enjoy to me, if you enjoy it while you're in it, then that's all that really matters. Like making it to the big stage. Yeah, that's cool. And that's awesome. Like that would be incredible if it took place. But if you're not enjoying the journey on the way, then yeah, what's the point? So can you talk about the evolution of uh, OTW from when you started to now? Um, yeah. So when I got going as in OTW, it was, um, they had a few, they had a few guys that were pretty much their top tier guys. Um, everybody for the most part prior to me getting there had been there for a few years. So they, they kind of had a nice group going as far as in ring competition. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, Brian, Brian was head trainer at that point, but he kind of, I think he was dealing with like an elbow injury when I first got there. Cause he didn't get, he didn't, he wasn't hands on as far as helping the other guys in the ring. He would, he would bark orders for a while, but <laughs> he wasn't able to get in there and like show you, like, no, this is how you do it. This is how, you know, proper technique. Um, but yeah, sh shortly after I got going, he got back and he was good and then got to lock up with him. And that's where you really start to like get the feel for it when you're in there with somebody who competes constantly. And they're like, no, if you move this way and then you do this and then your technique should be like this. And then that's where you really start to pick it up. And that's where I felt like I started to pick it up when it got going. Um, so, yeah, it was when we first got going, when I started our locker rooms, like we're in a warehouse pretty much. Uh, when we first got going, they used to put the locker rooms by the garage door. Mm -hmm. And it was just like a bunch of big wooden planks that they had stacked up to make two makeshift locker rooms. So baby faces on one side and then uh, heels on the other side. And we had carved out like a little window between the walls in case you needed to talk to the guy you were going to wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so like I said, like we were by the garage door. So in the winter time, um, if it was snowing outside, you know, it was freezing and you know, you're half naked cause you're, dressed in shiny underwear, ready to go out there and compete. And in the summertime, it was on fire. Uh, we would crack the garage, but you can't crack it too much because then the fans can see you. And it was, <laughs> it was, uh, it was all over the place.
place. Um, but where we are now, you know, we, we relocated, we've added a little bit of stage design and a little bit more production as far as like, you know, there's curtains, there's lighting, uh, we've stepped it up a little bit. I mean, we're still in a warehouse, but you know, it's a, it's a prettier, cleaner warehouse. <laughs> Can you talk about when you look back on when you first started, any, any typical moments through your transitions that stand out to you? Like, wow, I'm actually getting this. Um, when I got put into the program with Andy, where we started competing for the classic championship, that was where I really started to feel like, all right, I'm starting to understand this. When he and I, for a while, when he and I would compete, we would bring out the best in each other. Like it would, he always encouraged me to step up my game in the ring. And I always feel like I brought something out of him because of how passionately he cared about what we were involved in. Um, so yeah, just at that stage in my career, I felt like I was starting to understand it better. And then getting to team with uh, Chris Bourne when he came back and we had a one-on-one match at a night show and just being in there with him, you're just like, wow, this dude flies all over the place. Like everything he does is incredibly seamless and just being able to learn with him. And then from there we became a tag team and we ended up winning the tag team championship together. So that was probably the best (laughs) as far as like, as far as a baby face run, that was probably the best I had going because we were an exciting tag team and we'd fly all over the place. And I got to learn a lot from him. So that helped me step my game up even more. And then to where we are now, I made the transition from being a baby face to being a heel. And then now I feel like I have a better understanding of just being in the ring and being in control of what happens in a match. Now, besides uh, Brian Johnson, has there been anyone else that has influenced you or helped you out along that journey at OTW? Yeah, there's been a lot of people. I'm I'm lucky. That locker room has some really smart guys in it who are there to just help and give advice all the time. So, like, Brian obviously is, you know, the main guy who's helped me out. But right after him is, like, Justin Pusser. Yeah. And there's, like, he just pulls you to the side. Like, especially if he – he takes an appreciation in you and he feels like you're respectful and you deserve to be given advice. He'll pull you to the side and he'll let you know, like, Hey, that, you know, this worked in your match, but if you do this and you tweak it like this and you make sure you hit this at this spot, it takes that match from here to here. And he's always right. Like I've sat back and I've watched some of the matches he's had and just like, you can dissect them and pick them apart. And like, they just make so much sense. And they're so, just like so intricate and half the time he's not even doing much. He's just making everything count and making it mean much more. And that's probably one of the things I've learned from him, especially is just like anything I do in that ring, as long as I make it, I have to make it count. I have to make it mean something. I have to make it matter. Otherwise, why am I doing it? Definitely. And as far as uh, like competition level goals, is there anyone that you haven't competed against that you do want to compete against in the future? Um, there's a lot of people. I mean, <laughs> for the most part, my in-ring competition has been a lot of just at OTW. Mm-hmm. Um, there'd definitely be a lot of people I like to branch out and get the chance to step in the ring with. Um, I remember Leo Rush came to OTW. He got to compete against uh, Brian in a main event. You know, I would like to go one-on-one with Leo. Yeah, that would yeah, that would be dope. Yeah, he's a really good wrestler. <laughs> yeah, man, and I, I saw him like stage dive a couple of weeks ago, and it was like amazing. <laughs> so here, here's my question to you: it, How how does Dave uh, Davis separate himself from everybody else? You know, I could come in here and say, you know, um, I'm hard working and I do this, I do that. Mm-hmm. You know, most wrestlers do that. If they don't, then they're they're not going to make it too far. Um, me personally, I just think that I try my best to find me in a lot of what I do. Um, in the ring, I try to find my own personality, my own style to separate myself. So when you watch a Dave Davis match, it doesn't feel like the last match you watched. Or when you hear a Dave Davis promo, it doesn't feel like the last promo you heard earlier in the night. I, I just try to 
put as much of my personality into what I do so that it feels different from everybody else. For for you, like what's what's your your goal with wrestling? Like what do you what do you see yourself doing, you know, 10 years from now? What what do you hope to accomplish? What I hope to accomplish if I'm lucky to make it to a bigger stage, you know. Uh but if not, I would hope that I can just continue to have as much fun as humanly possible in the wrestling industry. Um because that's mainly what I got into it for. I got into it because I enjoyed wrestling as a fan and I wanted to know if I could be a wrestler myself. And when I finally got into wrestling, my whole goal has and still remains to just have as much fun as possible in this industry. So you see a lot of guys that are coming from Russell Pro, SWF, like Damian Gibbs, uh, Bobby Wayward, Beefcake Charlie, Delroy. When, when you see those guys coming from a bigger show and they're coming down to OTW, you know, do you, do you take pointers from those guys? I mean, they still, they're still they only doing it maybe three or four years as well. I mean, I take advice from anybody who's willing to, like, give me any. And if there's, like, a younger guy who asks me for advice, I always try to help, mm-hmm. you know, with the little knowledge I might have. Uh, but, yeah, when those guys come through, it's always nice to get a different perspective when it comes to what goes on in the ring like i had a match with gibbs not too long ago and we just kind of collabed on the idea of how the story of the match could go and what we could do together and it was a lot of fun man i, I love when he comes out with the, the parasol and, and everyone gets so like mad at him <laughs> that was actually funny we had um i forget what we were doing but he was at otw and we were getting something going and i remember him I think he went to go take the jack. He went to go take his jacket off, and he went to go like he was. He randomly tossed the parasol, yeah. and it landed perfectly on the ring rope. That's awesome. Yeah, he does like <laughs> a he does like a Rick Rude kind of thing where he shows you like one ab and then the other one. <laughs> yeah, he's. <laughs> it's a, like, he, I mean, he, I mean, he's in shape, so why not? You yeah, know, he's hilarious. It just the whole the Prince of Aesthetic character just works for him. It's just. <laughs> Do you have any good like stories uh, like that you could share? I mean, like funny stories that have happened to you or. Um, let me think. Uh, Maybe while driving, as... while driving or hanging out in the locker room or something. Uh, man, I I know I do. I'm having trouble thinking of them right now. Um, let me see. There's been a there's been some fun road stories. Just getting because usually um when I go out on the road, it's usually with uh. BTY, so I'm in. I'm usually in the car with uh, Justin Pusser, Brian Johnson, Adam Chandler, and uh, Miss Jasmine, and putting those guys together in a car. I'm usually the driver because I'm low man on totem pole. Putting those guys together in a car and just letting them talk is probably the funniest thing I've ever been a part of. Because all they do is find ways to just mess with each other, or primarily to mess with me. <laughs> <laughs> You got you got to put like a camera in there and do like one of those ride along episodes. <laughs> I don't know if they could air that on the network. Uh, it's not very family friendly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll blow it yourself. It'd be, it'd be hilarious. <laughs> I, I don't know if they would go for that. They might throw me out the car. <laughs> oh man! Now, when you when you were uh, in college, when you were at Rowan, uh, did you like participate in any sports or anything like that? No, ironically, I really wasn't much of an athlete. Um, prior to getting into wrestling, like as a kid, I played like all different types of sports. Yeah. Um, but growing up, I was kind of shy, so I didn't like to socialize or like go out and ha- you know hang out and play anything. So like, I want to say from maybe like fourth grade until I graduated high school in the college, like I didn't play any sports, like okay. none. Um. No, wait, no. I was I was involved in martial arts a little bit, but not very long. Maybe like a year of that just to like keep me busy. But uh yeah, didn't really get to play too many sports as an adult or a teenager. I got you. How how did you overcome your uh, your shyness and now you're like wrestling in front of fans and stuff? Um I realized that being quiet and antisocial wasn't going to get me through life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As shocking as that might be, but uh, 
Yeah, I found my I found ways of just making myself uh, socialize with people. So like I would find reasons to like put myself in groups or in certain situations where I would have to speak to someone or I'd have to interact with this person. Gotcha. And once you get to that moment, then you start to realize how easy it is to just strike up a conversation with someone you don't even know. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, so like I've done like. I do this nowadays and like my friends and family hate me for it. But uh, if I'm in an argument with someone and I feel like my opinion is so right to the point that I can literally grab somebody off the street and they'll agree with me. Mm -hmm. I grab somebody off the street and ask them the question. Oh my God. (laughs) I've been, I've been out in malls. I've been at movie theater. I've been at like random concerts, like a comedy show. If I feel strongly about my opinion, no, I'm going to add, like, oh, you don't agree with me? Okay, sir, can you come here real quick? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's funny. You you sound like you'll be best friends with Andrew here. You guys you guys will get along real well. <laughs> oh, man. Now, now, I wanted to ask you as well. Um, have you, is OTW, is that the only independent company you worked at? Have you ever, like, wrestled outside of OTW? Yeah, I've been outside of OTW a few times. I've, um, I would done a couple shows for uh, D2W up in Wharton, New Jersey. Uh, I was doing a few shows for uh, Right Coast Pro, which is a promotion out in Delaware. Mm-hmm. Um, I was competing. I did a spot for, um, I think it was BBW was the name of the promotion. BBWF? I hope I said that right. <laughs> Say it again? BBWF? I think so, yeah. yeah. I, I only got a one shot. So. <laughs> oh, okay. But, um, now, when you... Yeah, when, so, when it when it comes to stuff like that, do you do you kind of look at like, you know, like like the bigger companies, like let's say like a, a CZW or like a Russell Pro, when you see guys, you know, like going to TNA and WWE from those places, or is it kind of like one of those things where, you know, you just you just look at just getting work basically and being seen somewhere? Um, yeah, um, I think that's the whole point. Is just like. Just- you're going to these different places so somebody will see you. Yeah. And, you know, you're trying your best. That's why you try to branch out and go to different places just so you can get different eyes on you. Because even though, you know, at OTW, you know, we wrestle every single weekend or at 2 p.m. We put on monthly shows at 7 p.m. You know, it's still that same general fan base that we get. Yeah. And so going out to other places helps other people see us. And, you know, you go up to North Jersey and there's somebody at that show like, oh, well, wait, you wrestled down here? Oh, I'll definitely come check you out. Yeah. Or, you know, you go to Delaware and you somebody's like, you know what? I'm going to be in Jersey this weekend, so let me go check out that show. So it just helps further expose you and get more eyes on you. And that helps build the brand. Definitely. Have you ever met any legend that has helped you out like have watched your match or something like that, that um, the brain of? i've had i've done a couple of seminars uh with a few different wrestlers um one of my first ones uh we had a uh, gerald briscoe come in wow. and <laughs> check a few guys out at otw and basically what he told me because at that time i was still pretty green uh he basically told me that i needed more energy at the time it was prior to being turned up <laughs> yeah and he basically just told me he was like yeah it's obvious you're still pretty green uh, actually no it was kind of funny um i walked in and when he wanted to talk to me i forget i forget who it was somebody was like yeah this is dave he's kind of green and i think briscoe's response was he's not green he's black <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> but uh yeah so i i've had talks with him he he was like, you know, you got to be excited. You got to have fun because if you're having fun, the crowd's having fun. And that was a very good tip because I always try to have as much fun as I can when I'm in the ring. And then that translates to the crowd. Um, what else? I've met, a, I've met a couple other wrestlers who have been. I feel bad because I'm starting to forget people's names, which is not good. <laughs> um, I did a. I did another seminar uh, with uh, Jeff Jarrett. Who's, nice. This was 
at the point where I just switched over into being a heel and I was Mr. Davis. And I remember him saying how much he he liked my gear. <laughs> yeah. But he was also, he was very helpful in just like ring awareness and positioning that um, was definitely helpful as far as like if you get out of like the regular indies with no camera and you start making it to like TV, he gave that type of advice, which is very, very necessary as far as like moving forward in the future got you now 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 how do you manage like you know with otw doing shows every weekend training and you know just real life stuff in general like how do you how do you manage to do all that stuff uh coffee coffee <laughs> <laughs> lots of lots of coffee yeah um yeah it's kind of a hectic schedule there's a lot going on um but, you know, you try to manage, you find time for what's necessary. You find ways to, like, get everything taken care of. Uh, so you go with, so, like, what, practices three times a week, working a regular nine-to-five job. Um, currently in the process of trying to get my MBA, so I take a class at least once a week. Oh, nice. Then, uh... Then you gotta just you know. Then you gotta find time for family, friends, girlfriend. Um, like I said, I couldn't be there in the studio today because uh, you know, in the process of getting a house, so that is nice. You juggle a lot, but you find ways to make everything work. How how are you trying to reach out to other places? You know, are you looking at at CCW or WrestlePro? Um, um as far as outside places is concerned, I try to look for somewhere that is just you know a different audience than what i have um i kind of have been focusing on my style and my technique and just my overall performance as far as like my end my individual brand um yeah usually when it comes to outside promotions like brian is usually my go-through um Mm -hmm. he usually checks out a place and is like you know what you'd be good over here um, let me send you a workout for you and which is always appreciated. But for me, usually with the uh, outside promotions and other things of like that, I usually go through Brian because I'm like, all right, I, I kind of want you okay before I step out. Now, uh, I guess I'll ask kind of like a fun question. If you could have a match against anyone you wanted, who would it be against? If I had to choose, it could be anybody, living, uh, dead, whatever. Anybody that you, any one match you could have, anybody you would choose. It could be Virgil. <laughs> uh, I don't think it'd be Virgil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, just anyone. I think I would want to step in the ring with Shawn Michaels. Nice. That's not a bad pick. That's not a bad pick at all. <laughs> That's a good yeah, pick. I think if I could, like Shawn Michaels at a WrestleMania would be something I would want to try for. Yeah. And I think right behind him, it would be Brett. Nice. What, what, uh, what Shawn Michaels would it be? Would it be like the, the 1990s boy toy or the DX one or the one that came back from back issues? <laughs> I want to say the one that came back after the back issues because when he came back, it was insane. Like First of all, like... What he had like a herniated disc, came back and wrestled for what another nine years. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. And he never missed a beat either. It was crazy. Yeah, like I want, I want that, Sean. <laughs> See, I thought, I thought, I thought you were tapping into your inner hill, and you were going to say, "Oh, I can focus on his back and take him out." That's what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I, I just said that you know it's very <laughs> admirable that he did that. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> I would want to team up with the DX Shawn Michaels. That seems like fun. <laughs> so talking about WWE, who were the, some of the guys you look at now for inspiration, like coming up with move sets or ideas or something like that? Um, as far as watching WWE nowadays to look for inspiration, I like I really dig the New Day. Yes, yeah. in all honesty. And I think they just do a lot of fun, creative stuff and things that are just different as far as, like, style-wise. And, like, that's what I think inspires me when I go into a promo. And then standing next to Calvin, (laughs) 
I don't know where his stuff comes from, but like he's always off the wall. And so that makes for a fun dynamic. And I feel like in the sense of like a new day, who's like an insane promo that's just off the wall. I feel like we have that dynamic whenever he and I are together. Uh, but yeah, in ring style, I mean, I don't know. Like as far as like style wise, I think I just cry as of now. I kind of just, you know, kick punch and, hurt you as best I can. <laughs> nice. It was funny because I was watching a match and Calvin, he didn't take the hat off. No. <laughs> I was like, like, why would he? <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that was like so funny. Like he's wrestling in the hat. Like <laughs> It's a very stylish hat. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I just, like to me, that's just like, I don't know. I mean, it's just like, that makes him stand out to me. Yeah, he's a awesome. grown man in a captain suit. Yeah. <laughs> I, just I, think that, I bet you would take notice of that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just thought that was funny because usually people come out in the ring and they start they take off the hat and the jacket. And I'm like, yeah, this guy's wrestling in his gear. Like that, that's pretty awesome. That's something unique, you know, to him. Yeah, he's definitely, he's definitely different. <laughs> how, did, how did that team come about? Was it something you pitched or something that was pitched to you? Um, it was an idea that was actually pitched to me. Um, when I transitioned from being a baby face to a heel, I originally, they didn't give me the full, like, this is what we want to do with you. It was kind of like, you know, me and Chris were tag team champions at the time, but we started not seeing eye to eye, which led to my turn, which led to, um, us competing in a match together. And then I was told a couple weeks prior to that oh, when you compete in this match, this is going to happen with Calvin and Jasmine. And then I was like, oh, okay. So that's they just come and help me out, and that leads to a thing with Calvin and Chris. And he's like, no, that leads to you guys forming a team together. Mm-hmm. And I was like, really? And he was like, yeah, I want to put you with them, and we're going to make a group out of this. And I was like, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Now, when it comes to you know working singles and doing tags, is there one you prefer? Do you prefer tag or, you know, is it kind of just, it is what it is? Um, I enjoy singles matches because it's, it's me. It's usually my focus. It's my thought process and how I want it to go. Um, tagging is similar, but it's, uh, there's more moving parts involved with having other guys around. And I don't know. I think I like doing things on my own, but I really have fun when the tag team aspect is involved. So what is your main goal at OTW? Um, My main goal at this point is to make high society just the whole show. Just every segment, just high society. Opening match, we're involved. Semi-main event, we're involved. There's a promo in the middle of the show, we're involved in it. The main event comes up, we should be involved in it. Um, yeah, I just think we're one of the best acts going, and we should stay that way. Uh, my personal goals, I want to be heavyweight champion. Nice. Okay, I agree. You should, you should be champion. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> like, like, that is the goal as of right now. I've held classic championship, held the tag team championships. Uh, let me see, Harvest Cup winner. Uh, so, yeah, all that's left is to be the top dog, and that's what I want. We hope you, hopefully you can obtain those goals to be the world champ. Yeah. Uh, so, um, Dave, where can people find you? Um, you can find me on Twitter, um, at Turned Up Star. That's uh, my Twitter handle. Uh, I know previous guy couldn't remember his Twitter handle, but then yeah, no, we won't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, the Turned Up Superstar, Dave Davis. You can also find... Uh, my group, The High Society, on Facebook as well. Uh, I'm on Instagram as Turned Up Superstar, but I don't post a lot of photos. <laughs> I get tagged in a lot, but I don't post too many. <laughs> but yeah, so Twitter, Facebook, find me there. Awesome. And then you'll have upcoming events all through April, right? Every Saturday at OTW? Yep, every Saturday at 2 p.m. I will be at OTW. Um, we have shows running in April in may as well um yeah i'll probably pop up at a few d2w shows um just wherever you can find me it'll be posted online definitely 
Uh, to go check you out. And for us, you could follow us at Wrestling IQ 101 on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Also, you could follow, go to our website, WrestlingIQ101.com, for upcoming events, and po- posts, past shows that you can see. We'd like to thank you for coming and talking to us. Yeah, man, it was fun. I'd like to do it again. <laughs> oh, yeah, welcome anytime.